Hi, Terry Schoenfeld here. In this tutorial, we're going to focus on how to form an answerable clinical question. As a reminder, the five steps to providing evidence-based care are outlined here, and we'll focus on the first step, asking a clinical question. In general, there are two types of clinical questions. The first is background questions, and background questions ask for very general information about a condition. It tends to have two components, a question, root, and verb, and then the disorder, test, or treatment that we're interested in. So for example, background questions about cellulitis might be, what causes cellulitis? Or how do I treat cellulitis? These are very general type questions, and these can be answered using traditional medical textbooks. In contrast, foreground questions are much more detailed. They ask very specific knowledge about managing specific patients with a specific disorder. In, co in contrast, foreground questions have four components and is designated by the PICO acronym. P stands for the patient or problem. I is the intervention, whether that be a treatment or a diagnostic test. C is a comparison treatment or diagnostic test. And O is the outcome that we're interested in. So for example, a much more specific foreground question about cellulitis might be, in a diabetic patient with cellulitis, do IV antibiotics compared to oral antibiotics lead to higher cure rates? You can see this is a much more detailed and higher order question than the other questions that represented background questions. And I put the P, the I, the C, and the O here just to designate the components of this question that um, were the PICO. In asking a question, we would not put the PIC or O into the question. So why do this? Well, two reasons that are very important is to focus our scarce time um, on answering questions that will um, help our patients or that help improve our knowledge base. Also importantly, if you do a good job of developing a PICO type question, you can yield a very high uh, search strategy um, for doing a Medline search. It'll also help you once you find a resource that you think might answer your question, you'll be able to see is the patient population and particular intervention and outcomes, are they covered in this particular resource? Also, in this day and age, with um, uh, doing a lot of handoffs in the hospital or consulting a lot of um, consultants, um, it, you can ask them a much more specific question um, and get a better answer than if you just say, hey, please come help out on this patient. Your consultant may not know exactly what you want and might answer a different question than you actually had. The other thing I think you need to think about when you develop a question is what resource you're going to go to to try to answer that question. Now in a previous video in the earlier introductory module we talked about looking first in the pre-appraised resources. This here is really focusing if you can't find an answer in the pre-appraised resources and you're at the individual primary studies, which type of those studies might answer your question. And you can see for a therapy or a treatment question we'd really like to find randomized controlled trials. Um, and systematic reviews. For diagnosis, we're going to have hopefully controlled trials, but sometimes we just have cross-sectional studies. For prognostic questions, we're going to have to use observational studies like cohort and case control studies. For harm or etiology type questions, we'll have, again, observational studies. Preventative type things or screening, we're going to hopefully find randomized controlled trials. So asking a very specific question and thinking about um, um, what that question, what general area that question is in, like therapy or diagnosis, etc., can help you focus on finding the resource um, that will best answer that particular question. So let's try to practice this and see if we can convert this scenario into a PICO type question. So in morning rounds in the hematology oncology unit, a first year resident turns to you for a consultation. She wants to discuss options for managing moderate nausea and vomiting that can result in patients getting chemotherapy. She shares an experience that a relative of hers had who took ginger um, when prochlorperazine that was prescribed by the doctor didn't work and the um, patient's family member felt that it provided relief for nausea and vomiting. So let's take a moment and pause the video and think about first off which components of this scenario, which words would be the P, the I, the C, or an O. When you're done figuring that out, restart the video to see my answer. So what I did was think about chemotherapy as being the P. So patients undergoing chemotherapy might be my patient group that I'm interested in. Ginger was the intervention. Prochlorperazine was the comparator intervention. And then the outcome that I was interested in is hopefully preventing moderate nausea and vomiting. So how did you do? So now let's take these highlighted components and convert them into a flowing clinical question. So pause the video develop your question, 
and then when you're done, hit play and see what I came up with. So here's my PICO question for that scenario. In patients undergoing chemotherapy, is ginger as good or better than prochlorperazine in reducing moderate nausea and vomiting? Now to me that seems so much better than turning around and asking somebody, hey, does ginger work? They won't know what you're talking about. They might say, does it work in who? And for what? And is it better than what? Because everything is relative to something else. So forming detailed PICO questions will help you focus on getting a good answer to your question. It will help you find the resources that you need in the study design to look for uh, to answer your question and will help you focus your scarce time in providing high quality care and improving your own knowledge base.